you know, like, where can my help be found? My grandmother, by the way, was a widow at 52 years old. She's from up here, by the way, right up north here in Maine, and she, she was an amazing lady. My, grandfa- my uncle Craig was only 12 years old. My grandfather died. I was two years old. And she said this saying, and I heard it quoted by my mom so many times, that God never said it would be easy, but he did say he would go through it with us. And isn't that the truth? And do I not still hear it today, either in her voice, my grandmother's voice, or my own mom's voice? I still hear that saying. I still hear that word. Why? Because I am still going through it. And I know you guys are all going through it. And as the world turns dark and the journey gets rugged and it gets steep, and your heart is racing like mine, is it? 114, by the way, if you're a nurse, so keep an eye on me. 114, if you have a smart watch. I bet your watch doesn't read that. As your heart is racing, where do you turn for help? Our lives have been in a constant barrage of hardships and challenges, and none of them ever feel easy. Things like things and challenges from your jobs, hardships in your finances, trials in your health, hardships in your relationships, maybe with your loved ones, with one another, Maybe even with God the Father himself. You having trouble with his relationship lately? And this morning we're continuing our look in the Psalms. And Psalm 121 is like Psalm 23. It's a favorite to so many. So hopefully I won't butcher it for you guys if it's your favorite. But if Psalm 121 were like a novel at your local bookstore, this is what the back cover might read like. David is back with his profound exploration of faith and divine protection Join our protagonist in the battle of life as he looks up to the hills, recognizing the grandeur of creation, accordingly, the greatness of the creator. Explore the intimate power and prayer of trust, acknowledging that help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, no matter how bad the circumstances of your life happen to be. But have you ever noticed there's like this, there's always a subtitle under every psalm? You ever notice that? There's always a subtitle. I know my group on... Wednesday's knows because I'm making sure they know it. This most common one is the Psalm of Ascent. Was it required to ascend to 4K Mountain in New Hampshire? The Bunker Hill Memorial, maybe the Statue of Liberty, the stairs in my favorite art museum in Philadelphia, like Rocky did. The cathedral that sits at the top of a high set of stairs. It requires focus in your footing so you do not trip. It requires endurance and it requires your heart to pump faster and your breath to be shortened. With word imaging, David wants you to embrace that in your lives that the climb is real just to make the hike to the summit of your circumstance. And for some have called it the soldier psalm. Why? Because David, by the way, was fighting in a time of war when he wrote this. He was navigating the theme of battle and was truly pressing into God to cover him, to cover his head in the day of the battle. Then there's one more last label of Psalm 121. If you don't know them all, I'm going to try to give them all to you. It's the traveler psalm, to pray that they would be covered and better yet have a companion in the journey, whether it's a song of ascent, a song for the traveler, or the soldier psalm. We hope that we can all grasp this morning and maybe relate to one of these deep things in your heart even, these relational thoughts of that subheading, that we all need help, whether we're home, whether we're away, and we need it yesterday. And what we truly need, though, is divine help. So David purposed in drafting Psalm 121 was to help us, to direct us, and to encourage us. To encourage us to do what? To rest ourselves in our confidence in God. To have faith to put ourselves under his protection. And to commit ourselves to his care. Again, I'm going to say it quicker. Rest in. Have faith in. Commit ourselves to God's care. With what? With entire acceptance. With what? With the fulfillment knowing that our ever-present help is from God. Shall we break it down? It's a good introduction now, huh? Do I just close in prayer now? Because it's, this is a really long psalm. It isn't. It's really short if you know it. Okay, moving on. 
My, my help comes from the Lord. Psalm 121, first couple of verses. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So we opened the service with Tori and a great worship team, and it was wonderful. We even had Josephine up here doing great worship. We do this every time. With what? A time of worship. Every psalm, then this very psalm, is opened with worship. And these, believe it or not, this psalm was sung by Jewish travelers as they traveled to worship in the temple of Jerusalem. And they prepared themselves with this time of worship, and they swelled with confidence. With what? That God was going to have his care come upon him, that they could celebrate that he cared about his people. And how did they start? By looking up to the hills, recognizing the magnificence of the creation and therefore the greatness of who? God the creator. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? Does it really? Is that where you look for your confidence to come from? It is as much as David's eyes were looking up, but David reminds you it's not high enough. You've got to look further. You've got to reach farther. Verse 2 states that my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. This is a level of intimate prayer. This is a level of intimate prayer and trust that it's much higher than the hills. It's a place where you can acknowledge that God's help comes from the Lord, the creator of the hills, the maker of everything you see, everything you know the maker of heaven and earth. Like these travelers who are tra traversing these dangerous roads to Jerusalem, you're using Google Maps. Maybe you're using that thing, that little program in your car that isn't Google Maps. You're trying to avoid traffic congestion, jackknife tractor trailers, and worse, tragic things happening on the roads. We really need to hear well beyond technology, folks where the promises of Yahweh himself reside. It's beyond the mountains. It's beyond your technology. It's beyond all those YouTube videos that you're watching all week. All week. We're filling our minds. It's beyond all that. The Lord who created the mountains, this planet, this entire universe, is David's sole source of help. Is it ours, though? And here in 2024, can we take hold of that? It's the same God of David's psalm. It's the same God who remains the sole source of help for you too. And it's the same resource of direction. And it's the same resource who has already been where you're going. He already knows what's out there. He already knows what's ahead of you. Just like that beautiful maps thing on your, on your phone. He already knows. So we're going to look down at, at, at something that was given to me a couple of days ago, and God truly brings this imagery into consideration with Psalm 8, the spectrum he would know very well and able to map out himself, because why? Because he tended sheep in the middle of the night. He was the, like, the midwatch for the sheep. And in the midst of that, he would know who God really is. It's scary out there at night. If you haven't stood watch on the back of a submarine like me, so I didn't mention submarines, if you haven't stood watch in the middle of the night, you're all alone, you, you see the stars, you see the sky, you see the water moving around you. And David saw this. And maybe he sang it in his best Keith Green voice, if you know who Keith Green is. Oh, I'm not going to sing it like that. Don't worry. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is thy name in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is thy name in all the earth. Skipping down to verses 3 and 4. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon, the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? Our Lord is the artist who works, who the works of his fingers create everything you can see with your naked eye and so much more that you can't even see. And what's ironic, he's mindful of you. Our Lord is aware of you. He's aware of what's happening in your life. He, and he visit, he, he's going to visit with you. He's coming down like Adam of old and walking with you in the cool of the day. And what is going on in your life where, where the circumstances and the climb is so steep? So steep of a challenge, you're motivated to sing the Psalm of Ascent. 
reaching beyond the mountains of your troubles and finding some God that is mindful of you. Not some God, the God. Where God wants to ordain strength in you because your enemies are about you. Where God sees you in your time of great need and anxious feelings and wants to bring peace to your circumstances. That's the God of Psalm 8. That's the God of Psalm 121. Beyond the hills, he he wants to be your help. As the psalmist looks up to the mountains and he sees the God, the creator of earth, seated there on his heavenly throne, the prophet Zechariah felt the same way and recorded this thought. And now the Lord says, I am returning to Mount Zion. I will live in in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city. The mountain of the Lord of heaven's armies will be called the holy mountain. God is so faithful. He saw his people and he forgave his people and he returned to his people. The Bible often refers to the heights of Jerusalem as the holy mountains where God dwells. This is in Psalm 48. I hope I'm stealing a lot of psalms like pastor stole my psalms last, psalm last week. Is anybody doing Psalm 48? I'm kidding. All right, Psalm 48. How great is the Lord, how deserving of praise in the city of our God, which sits on the holy mountains. It is high and magnificent. The whole earth rejoices to see it. Mount Zion, the holy mountain in the city of the great king. We need to approach God with thanksgiving and praise. He's the great king on his holy mountain. We need to remember like we did worship. Why do we do worship every week? So you can start letting go of the stuff you're carrying in here. All those burdens that you need to lay down. You need to lay those down so you can make the climb. And with true attitude of gratitude of who God is. And next, for, for what he's going to do and what he's already done. Now, if he's never going to do another thing for you, has he done not already? Look behind me. What's behind me? Has he not done it already? God is faithful to you. Approach him with thanksgiving and praise. Psalm 95, the, the psalm of thanksgiving offers up that we have to approach him with praise on our lips. Come, let us sing for the joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving. It's stolen with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and in the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it. His hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before our Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are his people of his pasture, the flock under his care. He is worthy of his approach with an authentic gratitude, with genuine thanksgiving and praise. Why? Because he is worth it all, and God is God. And by the way, when you call in his name, what happens? They know this in Wednesday night. He shows up. He shows up. And not from a high place, he is already showing up. And But the, from the high places, it says in the scripture, the help comes from the Lord. I call to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy mountain. The Lord surrounds you and provides you with mountains of everlasting security, Psalm 125, verse 2. Pastor addressed this problem with sleeping last week, and, and this psalm addresses it as well in sharing seven, Psalm 77. And I know for many of you with the COVID crisis, teleworking, sheltering in homes, and many like me are struggling with cabin fever. Anybody struggling with cabin fever like me? I can't stand it, although I'm lazy now. I get out of bed, I take a shower, I walk 16 feet, and I'm sitting. I don't get in my car, I don't drive. But what has it done? It's, it's messed up my sleep patterns. To this day, I am up, up once in a while in the middle of the night. And at times, like David, I kind of feel alone. Like when he was tending sheep, I'm a little alone. Is there anybody like that? Is there anybody listening? Is somebody, is, does anybody hear me? Does anybody care that I'm here, that I'm by myself? David felt this way in the midst of many crises. If you don't know it, read the Psalms. So many laments poured, just poured out to God. He felt alone, and he needed not only rest, but he needed relief from pressure and strain. And that, that is where, in the place that the Holy Spirit reminded David, he was never alone. Even, for the, even this sermon, weeks ago, I was woken up alone, and I was reminded I was not alone. God had breathed that Psalm 8 section 
in my dreams, I was watching myself typing it in my dreams. And I kept saying to God, I'll get it in the morning. The next thing I'm, lying, I'm wide awake, I'm laying there, I got out of bed, I typed that section at 2.30 in the morning, see you Ray later if you need the confirmation, because I sent him the PowerPoint change at 3 a.m., and he kind of yelled at me on Wednesday. God wants you to know you're not alone, even in the middle of the night. Picking up at verse 3 in Psalm 121, he will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he watches over, the, over Israel. N- never slumbers or never sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. He will not let you stumble. He never sleeps. He who watches over all the nation watches over all of you. God even wants you to know that he, the Lord himself, watches over you. And he stands over you as this protective shade. You know, I love this language. I mean, David is so prolific with beautiful imagery. And this arid terrain of the Middle East and the lack of freedom from the sun must have been awful. Danger also came from the form of these burning rays of sun. What do, you, what do you need that shade from God for? What do you need to protect from? What is blazing onto your life right now where you need the Lord standing beside me as your protective shade? What is that? Even now, right now, what is relentlessly affecting how you think? You know how you're out there in the sun? I was playing tennis in Puerto Rico when I was in the Navy. In the middle of the day, that's probably not a good idea. No hat. And I got heat stroke like. I was out there one set. I'm in the second set. I couldn't even see. It was like looking down a tunnel. What are you being affected by? You can't even think. You can't move. You You don't even know what to believe. It is so relentless. And David was in such a place. And the Lord himself becomes his protective shade there. Psalm 91, 1, he who dwells in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty is an everyday experience of someone who what? In spite of being persecuted, in spite of being under the very malice and being very threatened danger of other people, has God's protective shade, the protective shade of the Almighty, providing a place of so being thoroughly protected that you're at home in a very strange terrain. That's what the protective shade does. It creates a place of security and safety and a place where you can can just trust God, you know? You're remaining in the protection, the comfort and safety of God of absolute power. And there's a result of dwelling there in a place of absolute trust. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. And so I hope that you're starting to feel that David is trying to give you, no matter what's going on, there is a place. There is a place of absolute protection, comfort, and safety in the Lord's power. So moving down to God's provision in verses 3 and 4 again, he will not let you stumble. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, who watches over Israel will never slumber to sleep. Like a shepherd or a caretaker, he watches over his people. He is there for you with foresight and protection. That's what a good shepherd does, doesn't he? He has foresight and he he provides protection. And he's alongside you, over you in every way you need. I was out in the highlands of Scotland last year with Joanne, and I can assure you there were no shepherds. Those highland sheep were just whatever they wanted. In your roads, they were everywhere. These sheep. You are under God's constant care, constant care, constant foresight. He sees you. The symbol of shade here is something which only blocks the punishing rays of the sun. It also echoes echoes Christ's sacrificial care of the cross where God blocked the wrath on our behalf, Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. He blocked the wrath for you. That shade blocks the wrath from you. In New King James verse 5, stay the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The right hand is no one with the word of God implies strength and authority. He is your right hand. He puts shade over your right hand. Who sits at the right hand right now? Who sits there? Jesus sits there. 
The Lord's right hand speaks of his protective power. God is there strengthening you from the shade on your right hand by Jesus himself. Does Jesus slumber or sleep? Never does. He's always there. He's always interceding for you. He's always caring for you. No matter what you're going through, God is providing this power and protection that you truly need. Moving on to verse 6. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps your watch over you as you come and as you go, both now and forever. This is a 24-hour alarm system on you day and night. It is there all the time. It is out saying it's ever vigilant, never wearying, never sleeping, all-knowing. God is a great thing. It's both a warning to us and also to others who have come to harm you. He sees the terrain before it even is there. It's coming up even if it's pitch black. You know, he sees it. He keeps your foot from slipping in every danger from sunstroke in the heat of the day to exposure to those horrible cold nights, the Lord is there to watch over and protect you. He is there. Whether we see, whether we face threats to body or soul in every situation of life, Psalm 46 one says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, God has you covered. My help comes from the Lord because God keeps and protects his children in all times, in all danger. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and you go, both now and forever. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. Can we grasp, can we simply embrace that the word of God contains and offers so many incredible promises from the Lord? This is just one. This is just one promise. God's presence and provision remains the same no matter what you see, and I know this is going to be a shock to you, or even what you feel. Feelings are cheap. They're temporary. They lead you astray. He doesn't care about that. He only cares that you are his child. But we do have a part to do. And I know what you're thinking. I have a responsibility. I have a part. What is your part? What is your part to do? Here we are. You have to hope and trust in him. That's it. You only have to hope and trust in him. That's your part. You have to do this faith walk. You, you who fear and trust in the Lord, he is the help and shield. Psalm 115, 11. You have to hope and trust in him. Faith's the essential aspect of every Christ follower. If you're a Christ follower, you gotta have the faith walk. You gotta walk it. You gotta put your hope and trust in him. You cannot run the whole line of opportunities to get your problem fixed before getting to God. You need to get right back to the beginning. Put God number one and start chasing him to be where your help is. Faith is such an essential part. It involves trusting God and his promises and his character, even when you cannot see the outcome. And that's scary for some people in this room. When we can't see what the outcome is, it's hard to trust God's character, even though we know it, even though we speak it, even though we sing it, it's hard to trust it. And faith means believing that God is who he says he is and it defines it for us all that he will do what he says he will do. Will he do that? Does, will he do what he says he will do? Is he, if he's your help, will he do what he says he will do for you? When God shows up, I said earlier, when God shows up, something happens. It's a fundamental part of your relationship with God. It's a crucial part of your spiritual growth. And David truly wanted you to grasp. This growth is based on putting your trust in God. You've got to put your trust in God and look for his help. And you will grow. If you don't, if you keep doing it on your own, your growth will be stunted. Psalm 33, 20 said this, we put our hope in the Lord and he is our help and our shield. Jesus offered this start. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for his sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees the wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him, and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the sheep. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and they know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. 
So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. My help comes from the Lord. Why? Because Jesus, the good shepherd, lays his life down for his sheep. I hope you know who the good shepherd is. I hope you know that he will lay down his life for his sheep. And I hope you remember that Jesus said, my sheep know me. And if you know that, then you'll put your faith and trust in him for your help. If you don't know the good shepherd, you'll put your faith and trust in all these crazy things out there offered in the world. So in closing tonight, from Psalm 121, the Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forevermore. David, the king of Israel, drafted a similar thought in Psalm 139 where he said this, you know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar, you discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar in all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, yes, Lord, you know it completely. We as believers of every generation, it's essential to have this same simple awareness, to embrace and secure that this hope and trust as we come and as we go, that he is the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God sees you as you come and go. He even knows what you're thinking right now. He knows what you're even going to say when you get in the car after this message. He knows everything about you. God moves in both time and space. And before you even chose the outfit you're wearing right now, and where you're sitting even, he was already there. He was already in your seats. He was already thinking about you. And I think that is scary in some ways, and I think that is awesome. And he already knows your thoughts in this very moment. And he hopes you can find his presence for whatever is going on. If the keyboardists can come forward and we're going to finish this up. God so desires you and I to trust like him in where we can proclaim my help comes from the Lord. No matter what trouble we face in the dark world, God is with us, shining his light in his darkness. He is providing everything we need for life and godliness, 2 Peter 1.3. Whatever setbacks, whatever hardships, no matter what evil you can encounter, our faithful God will transform these challenges and contribute for our good, everything. All our days, he is our helper and the God who sustains our lives. And no matter what trouble we face in this dark world, God is with us, shining his light in the darkness. All of our days, he is our helper and the God who sustains our lives. And this morning, if you can stand up and as one and cry in the voice, my help comes from the Lord. If you can't do that this morning, if you can't do that when you drive home, we want to help you in the midst of your challenges. We want to help you in the midst of your hardships, as Psalm 46 says, to find the trust and faith to know what God is, our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. And if that isn't you, As I close in prayer, I I need you to come forward. There's going to be people to pray for you. They they want to remind you that that the help comes from the Lord. If the team can come forward now to provide your need, to shine light into your darkness, to be your help and a God who sustains you. And we're here to listen to your story. We're here to pray with you. We're here to remind you that your help comes from the Lord. So if that's you, let's pray. Father, come forward as we pray. Father, we thank you that You are who you are, God, and you've never changed. And when, as I said earlier, when when we seek you, we find you, and when we seek you, you show up. And I ask you to minister to your people this morning. As we close this message out, I ask you, Lord, all these words, they're they're awesome. There they are what they are, God. But this, the change happens when we turn to you and we learn to say, my help comes from the Lord. It's not in the mountains. It's well beyond that. And that we trust in you and we have faith that you're going to make a difference. And just bless us today.